Thank you, Dr. Ducatel, for the nice introduction. And uh, I would like also to uh, thank the organizers uh, of this Advantia event uh, to invite me, uh, to give me the opportunity to present this work. Uh, so my talk is entitled Chicken Response to Heat Exposure and Early Acclimation Strategies. And uh, I work uh, at INRA in the unit named BOA for um, avian biology and poultry science. So as you know, the fast-growing broiler chickens have uh, really good performance at thermal neutrality, but uh, they, are, uh, they have poor thermotolerance uh, when they are not uh, uh, acclimated. And uh, why so? It's because uh, the selection for growth and feed efficiency in standard conditions uh, have uh, made them very performant for breast uh, muscle mass uh, uh, growth, uh, but uh, they are heat sensitive. And in fact, the relative uh, mass of the cardiovascular and respiratory systems has not followed the same evolution. Um, and the morphology of the bird has much changed uh, during the past uh, decades. And uh, these birds have difficulties to uh, lose the heat they produce. So, um, heat exposure, heat waves, and chronic heat exposure will have neg negative consequences on welfare uh, through uh, morbidity, mortality of the birds. There will be also economic loss, and there can be interactions with other factors. Uh, relative humidity, we have talked about this, uh, pathogens, the diet or the water quality, the genetic strain, the age, the physiological uh, state. So uh, when you expose a bird uh, for the first time to heat a chicken, uh, in fact there is an hyperthermia, uh, as you can see on this graph, in fact at uh, 30 two degrees, it is an exposure of two hours and a half. In fact, you have a huge increase in uh, body temperature uh, at 30 degrees as compared to 22 degrees uh, for the first exposure. And uh, this hyperthermia uh, is uh, lower uh, when you re-expose the bird uh, to heat, uh, to high temperature and there can be an acclimation. But as you know, the body temperature is the result of the balance of the heat production from the bird and its capacity to lo lose heat. And the dissipation of the heat produced by fast-growing broilers is limited by their poor capacity for sensible heat loss uh, that is um, uh, mainly due uh, to the, the phaser. Uh, in fact, the heat uh, can hardly, hardly be uh, dissipated from the skin because of the feather. There are only some uh, tissues uh, fr from which it can be easily dissipated that are without feather, so the head and the leg below the, the wings. And uh, uh, if relative humidity is not too high, in fact, the birds relate on hyperventilation uh, for uh, evaporating water uh, so that uh, they, they can lose heat by this way. Uh, so they, at 32 degrees, they increase the time painting and the inspiration number is uh, multiplied by three uh, as compared to 22 degrees. But this has an energy cost, and also uh, there are consequences on blood parameters. They can be uh, blood alkalosis uh, with uh, less uh, protons uh, in, into the blood. Uh, and also there are consequences in uh, some ions like uh, calcium, carbonate, and uh, there is a lower uh, partial, partial pressure in CO2 in the blood. Um, rapidly also, when you expose a bird to heat, 
during a heat challenge that are results from uh, pistons and coasters. Uh, you, um, you have a change, you observe a change in the plasma T3 concentration. This hormone is a thyroid hormone that is a major stimulator of heat production. And as you can see uh, on this table, uh, this uh, plasma T3 concentration uh, will be uh, lower in the birds that are exposed to heat as compared to uh, uh, thermal neutrality. And there is also uh, an increase, a uh, dramatic increase, in the plasma corticosterone concentration during heat exposure uh, due uh, acute ex heat exposure. Uh, and this um, corticosterone is an hormone, a metabolic hormone, that is involved in the stress response of the bird. Um, a major consequence of uh, the heat exposure in the long term is the decrease in uh, feed intake uh, and in, uh, in uh, live weight gain, as uh, was already said uh, in previous talks. And um, there is a, a, a dramatic effect on live weight gain when you go uh, up in temperature above uh, 26 degrees approximately. And uh, after, uh, above this temperature, you, also, you can also observe an increase in the uh, feed conversion ratio. Uh, during uh, um, chronic exposure to heat, uh, the, the consequences on feed, uh, feed intake and growth are, uh, imp are uh, important. And uh, that was shown uh, uh, in uh, 1996 by uh, Pierre-André uh, and co-authors. Um, uh, they compared birds at 32 degrees ad libitum fed and uh, 22 degrees, uh, and uh, they showed that there was a 25% decrease in feed intake, but a 40% decrease in uh, uh, body weight gain uh, in these conditions. But there were also changes in uh, body composition, with an increased fatness of the bird, reduced protein deposition, changes in plasma hormone and metabolite concentrations, and the lower heat production of the bird at 32 degrees, uh, mainly by uh, a decrease in uh, metabolic rate, basal metabolic rate. So, one strategy that uh, uh, we studied at the lab uh, to increase the adaptive capacities of the, of the birds, to increase their uh, heat tolerance, uh, while maintaining performance, is uh, to uh, try to acclimate the bird as soon as possible in their life and to get uh, effects on the long term. So uh, there were several strategies uh, one was to um, uh, try to acclimate chicks to heat very early. So these are results from uh, Yehav and McMurtry, and also uh, from Inra by De Basilio and co-authors. And uh, these groups um, worked on very early heat stimulation of the birds, and they got quite interesting results in the long term on, on uh, mortality for example, during a heat challenge. Uh, but the problem is here is to uh, heat uh, at a very high temperature the poultry house in a homogeneous way in order to uh, uh, condition the, the chicks. So the other strategy was to uh, acclimate the birds in the incubator because it's really easier to do and to control properly. The idea, in fact, is to uh, act on the thermoregulation um, pathways. So as you know, uh, this is, there is a central control of uh, body temperature at the level uh, of the hypothalamus. And there are also endocrine signals through uh, the pituitary thyroid gland pathway and also adrenal um, uh, pathways. 
Uh, there, uh, there are, uh, and in fact, this will regulate heat exchanges, uh, heat production, heat loss, the behavior of the bird. And the idea here, in uh, uh, acclimating the bird very early, before the end of the first week of, of age, so here, uh, during incubation, is to um, modify uh, the, the threshold uh, temperature uh, to which the system refers to in order to regulate temperature. So, um, uh, before, uh, in fact, all, all the loop is, uh, is closed. So, um, it took much time to, uh, um, to, uh, to optimize the temperature at which the stimulation, the heat stimulation, uh, had to be done during incubation, the duration of the stimulation, etc., and the temperature. Uh, so, uh, this was also dependent on the ontogeny of the endocrine axis. So the, that regulates heat production and heat loss. And in fact, uh, for example, uh, there were trials on uh, uh, mid, only mid embryogenesis here that were not efficient in the long term. Um, there were also trials in the late embryogenesis. And here there is an interesting result from uh, Tona and Cotors. Tona worked in uh, uh, Leuven at the University uh, Catholic University of Leuven, and he showed that uh, the thermal manipulation of uh, eggs uh, induced a lower heat production of the eggs by at the end of embryogenesis. So um, this suggested that the heat production, the metabolic rate of the, of the bird could be uh, affected by uh, this uh, stimulation. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this uh, program had uh, uh, nice, um, well, induced nice, nice results in the short term, but not in the long term. So there were other experiments that uh, were uh, uh, that targeted more at the middle uh, until the end of embryogenesis. So uh, here I will give you more details about these programs. Uh, it was uh, 12 hours a day. Uh, or uh, 24 hours a day at 39.5 degrees. And uh, here, the relative humidity was also uh, quite high, uh, at 65% uh, instead of 56, in order not to dehydrate the eggs. And this from uh, day 7 to 16 of uh, incubation. And uh, in this case, in fact, if you do it uh, 12 hours a day, there is a recovery by the embryo be between stimulations. Then uh, the hatchability of the eggs are uh, not different from the controls. Anyway, if you do it continuously, it's, it uh, gives really, uh, really bad results because there is embryo uh, mortality. So uh, from the work uh, of uh, many studies on uh, these uh, programs uh, during embryogenesis, uh, we uh, drew this, uh, this uh, graph on which you can see the effect of the thermal manipulation on uh, the reduction of body temperature of the birds. In fact, when you uh, make this uh, program, the, the main uh, result is that the body temperature of the chick is reduced from the hatching and in some experiments, until uh, here 50 days of age. And the most efficient programs were uh, the last one I told you about, uh, from day uh, 7 to uh, 16 of uh, embryogenesis here, with uh, um, uh, 0 0.7 uh, to uh, 0 0.4 approximately uh, degrees less in these birds. So, with this program, as I show you, the achability was maintained. Uh, the growth and the uh, fit conversion ratio were also uh, not different. And the thermotolerance of the birds were, uh, was improved in males 
because females were not affected. It was here an acute heat exposure uh, to 35 degrees during five hours. And uh, so uh, the mortality in males was uh, reduced by half uh, during the heat challenge. It had also uh, interesting results on uh, abdominal fatness that was uh, reduced with this program in the birds, and also breast yield was increased both in males and females here at, uh, in thermoneutral conditions when they are reared normally. So on this model, with uh, cyclic uh, elevations of, uh, tem of uh, incubation temperature, uh, we tried to go further into the comprehension of the mechanisms that were involved in the better uh, thermotolerance of these birds. So we studied the birds until uh, 34 days of age, and at the end of the trial, uh, we divided the group in, in two. So we had the, um, one part of the, the birds that were either controlled or thermal manipulated that were kept at 21 degrees, and we had half of the group that were submitted to a heat challenge uh, of five hours, uh, this time at 32 degrees, in order not to kill the birds, but uh, to have them just in uh, physiological conditions, but heat stressed. And so we uh, tried to study what were the physiological and metabolic mechanisms that were involved in the acquisition of embryo uh, acclimation. So in focusing in uh, blood hormone, gas, and metabolites, and also the metabolic pathways uh, that could be involved, uh, in the liver and in the muscle, uh, muscles that are uh, involved in heat production uh, by their total mass. And this was uh, realized during the thesis, PhD thesis of Thomas Loyot at INRA. So uh, concerning our results, uh, we could reprodu reproduce the decrease in body temperature in the birds that were uh, thermally manipulated as compared to the uh, control ones in the clear blue here. And uh, we could see this until uh, 28 days of age in our trials, not later on. And also we observed, we took the blood samples on these birds and we observed that uh, in thermal manipulated ones, uh, the T3 concentration was lower, suggesting perhaps that their heat production or uh, metabolic um, act, uh, intensity was reduced. Uh, as for uh, the, the stress of these birds, uh, we uh, measured the heterophiles on lymphocyte ratio uh, that you heard about already. And uh, what was interested, interesting sorry, was that, in fact, uh, in the control group here, submitted to heat in dark blue, uh, you had an increase in this uh, ratio that you could not see when you submitted the TM birds to uh, the heat challenge that, that are TCH birds. So these birds uh, were perhaps less uh, stressed than uh, these ones. As for uh, respiratory physiology, we could observe uh, changes also due to uh, the thermal manipulation, both the thermal manipulation and the heat challenge. So the effect of the heat challenge is uh, well known that it can uh, decrease PCO2 in, uh, in the blood. But here also we observe changes due to the thermal manipulation of uh, the eggs. And uh, we had uh, an effect of the thermal manipulation of the uh, saturation on the of uh, oxygen in the blood. So these results uh, suggest that, that there have been uh, modifications of respiratory physiology of the birds and perhaps of uh, their uh, metabolic uh, intensity. To go further, uh, we uh, sampled some uh, muscle and uh, we uh, measured the expression of some genes that were involved in uh, uh, energy metabolism, especially uh, PGC1 alpha, which is um, um, a transcription factor 
that uh, regulates the mitochondria uh, uh, generation and activity. And in fact, in the birds that were thermal manipulated, we observed a decrease in the expression of this gene. In the liver, we had also uh, results on the metabolic activity as shown by the reduced in TM group, uh, the reduction, sorry, of uh, citrate synthase activity, which is an enzyme of the Krebs cycle. So this suggests a limitation of mitochondrial energy metabolism in these birds that were submitted to thermal manipulation during embryogenesis. And this could partly explain the reduction in, uh, in uh, body temperature uh, from this, uh, these uh, chickens. Um, we also uh, had some elements on uh, the uh, capacity of the birds for heatless. Um, and here, uh, on these graphs, uh, we have uh, uh, a drone. In fact, the, the here you have the comb temperature that we measured by uh, infrared uh, imaging and the rectal temperature of the bird, the internal temperature. As a, and as you can see, when animals are at 21 degrees here, it's uh, the, the graphs here, uh, you have the, a similar trend of uh, a correlation between uh, both temperatures uh, at thermal uh, neutrality. So uh, the more um, the, the internal uh, body temperature uh, is uh, high, uh, the more the comb temperature is uh, high. And in fact, uh, when you put the animals under heat, exposure, uh, the two uh, populations don't react the same. So as you can see, there is no uh, correlation anymore in the control birds, but uh, in the thermomanipulated ones, in fact, you have a, a negative correlation that is here. Uh, so in fact, uh, uh, these animals uh, uh, are able here uh, to, uh, in fact, uh, to, to, to better dissipate uh, their, their heat. Um, we also went further uh, into the, um, uh, the, stu the study of uh, the metabolic regulation and uh, gene expression regulation in these models. And uh, this by studying the transcription, transcriptome, sorry. So all the, the, the gene, it's a high throughput study of the, the gene that are expressed in the breast muscle uh, in these groups. And uh, to, to try to uh, discover new genes that could be affected in the muscle by the treatments. And what we saw is that when you compare the control group and the TM group at thermal neutrality, there are not so many genes that are modified by the, the thermal manipulation of the embryo. Uh, these ones are mostly involved in metabolic regulations. But when you submit the animals to, to heat, to the heat challenge, here and uh, here, as compared to uh, their uh, own control groups, in fact, you see that there are many more responsive genes uh, that are uh, differentially expressed in the TM group when they are uh, submitted to heat as compared to the uh, control group. So, in fact, these birds are uh, responding earlier or in an amplified manner to heat when they are uh, uh, exposed again to heat. So, uh, they are somewhat prepared to respond to heat later on at the end uh, of the f finisher period. And these genes are particularly involved in metabolic regulations, chromatin modifications, the vascularization of the muscle also, so that could have a, a, a link with uh, the heat loss also, and the stress response. 
And then we went further in uh, unraveling the, mecha the mechanisms that are behind this by studying uh, if there were epigenetic changes related to this response. In fact, epigenetic changes are uh, changes in phenotype and gene expression that are, uh, in fact, uh, uh, transmi uh, that can be transmitted to, uh, uh, to um, the next generation by uh, mitosis and uh, sometimes uh, uh, also uh, through uh, the generation of animals, and, uh, but that can be reversible. So it's not genetic, it's epigenetic, and this is uh, related for example, two uh, changes, uh, chemical changes on the DNA. So uh, here, uh, the methylation of uh, cytosine bases on DNA, or also two changes in the protein on which DNA is wrapped. And this will uh, open or close um, the, in fact, uh, the, the, the chromatin, the, the way the DNA is, uh, is um, wrapped and it will open or not the DNA for uh, transcription and then gene expression. So we studied some uh, modifications of this protein, histones, uh, in our model. So just uh, in the animals that were uh, controlled or thermal manipulated, uh, but at uh, thermal neutrality, so at 21 degrees. And uh, we did this in the muscle, the pectoralis major muscle, but also in the hypothalamus, that is the central uh, tissue for uh, thermoregulation. And what we obtained is that uh, there were, uh, in fact, associated to changes in this histones, uh, there were uh, uh, regions in DNA uh, that were uh, differential between the TM, the thermal manipulated, and the controls, and more, much more in the hypothalamus than in the pectoralis major. So the, the answer was much larger in the brain than in, in the muscle. And in fact, uh, we tried to know what were the pathways that could be affected by these epigenetic uh, responses. And uh, here again, we uh, add results on hormone metabolic processes, stress response, but also transport, immunity, uh, cell cycle regulation, neurogenesis, uh, cellular processes. So to conclude on this uh, early uh, uh, thermal manipulations. So early heat stimulation has long-term positive effects on survival in males later uh, exposed to acute heat. So uh, we are now uh, studying uh, with uh, partners in uh, Africa, in West Africa, uh, how uh, this could be uh, interesting in a really um, uh, uh, living uh, tropical humid uh, conditions. So uh, this is uh, a more uh, applied uh, study. Uh, we have shown that the physiology and metabolism of these chickens are changed in the long term. Uh, so uh, that could be linked to a reduction in heat production and enhanced heat loss inducing thermotolerance. There are also modifications in hypothalamic DNA methylation and histone post-translational modifications. So these epigenetic mechanisms I told you about. Uh, and this uh, could uh, regulate gene expression is in our models. So now the question is to know if we can transfer this to the progeny. Uh, and we have experiments on quails running uh, to see if uh, uh, the this treatment applied on eggs in a first generation can have effects on thermal tolerance in the and these mechanisms in the next generation up to uh, uh, down to uh, four generations. And uh, so, is it possible to increase the bird adaptive capacities? Uh, we answer uh, yes. 
and uh, this could be uh, through uh, the combinations of both genetic and management epigenetic uh, approaches besides others that we talked about uh, today. And uh, we have also to have a look to all performance parameters, uh, including economic, environmental, and social parameters, and uh, including uh, also work on meat quality uh, and uh, other uh, performance data. So I have finished now, and I wish to thank all the teams involved in this work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Collet. Very interesting talk. I presume that there will be questions. The first one, one is, would early acclimation, acclimation also work for layers and breeders? Well, uh, this is a good question because, uh, for example, for breeders, if we could treat the breeders and not the terminal uh, crossings, it would be less animals to treat in the incubators, etc. Uh, in fact, we, mm, uh, we, we plan to, to do uh, such uh, experiments and we, we also uh, work on, uh, on the quails. Um, in fact, uh, for the, the layers, there have not been uh, uh, studies with the same um, uh, Thurman manipulation that we, we did, but during late embryogenesis. And uh, this was not uh, so convincing. But uh, obviously, uh, it's, uh, it would be interesting to go further in, into the, um, these studies on layers. And uh, in fact, in quails, uh, uh, these birds are, um, well, it's another model, but they are laying. And uh, then we, we will uh, also study uh, the uh, performance parameters on uh, egg laying, etc. Dr. Colin, there is a question there as yes. to, um, you know, in what breed did you do your first experiments in, in, and does it, can you immediately transfer this to, say, our traditional com commercial breeds with her, which are used in practice mostly? In fact, um, it, it could be uh, applied uh, quite easily because uh, uh, it's only uh, up to 30 uh, 9.5 degrees and 65 percent uh, uh, relative humidity, uh, 12 hours a day. Uh, but um, it's a it's a risk for the um, you know for the hatchery to to try this. So uh, we we plan also to uh, to make uh, trials uh, with the commercial hatcheries. Uh, but I know I, I have been uh, talking with uh, Brazilian uh, um, colleagues, and they said that uh, in Brazil uh, there were the hatchery, commercial hatchery, uh, were experimenting such, uh, not uh, perhaps not exactly the same uh, thermal manipulation, but it was uh, uh, something they were uh, experiencing already. So. There's one completely different question, which I think is interesting also. The first one, you see heat stress being an oxidative stress. Did mm. you observe a reduction of oxidative imbalance after thermal manipulation? I mean, were these birds less susceptible to oxidative stress in general? Or did you see any markers of oxidative stress being changed? Um, in fact, we... Uh in uh, the thermal manipulation with heat, we did not uh, measure uh, such uh, mechanisms. We did it uh, uh, with cold manipulation. I did not talk about it, but we also try cold manipulations. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, th in this case, there, there were changes in the um, antioxidant uh, uh, enzyme um, activities just after hatch. So uh, obviously uh, the, the, the increase in temperature or the decrease in, in temperature during incubation may uh, induce uh, oxidative stress and perhaps the animal recovers uh, from heat and, uh, and can um, 
uh, can better perhaps cope with this, but we have not the results in this particular model. Okay. Maybe one last question. Um, would it be as efficient to precondition the embryo or the young chick? You, you sort of touched briefly on this issue when you were reviewing the literature. So after hatching, could that work also or? After hatching, it was, uh, yes, it worked. It was uh, work from uh, Yav and yeah. co-authors and also De Basilio. And, uh, but it's at three or five days of age, you um, increase temperature, uh, ambient temperature up to uh, 37.5 or 38 degrees for 24 hours. Mm. And uh, here again, there is a change in uh, uh, T3 concentration in the blood and uh, a better heat tolerance, less mortality uh, at the end. Uh, so um, uh, this, this can be also uh, uh, interesting, but uh, you have to find a way to uh, condition the chick. So I, I know that in Venezuela they have tried some systems with uh, smaller uh, artificial uh, chambers, well, or with uh, walls to, uh, to have an homogeneous uh, temperature uh, on the chicks to, to try to get the effect on the long term. Oh, that's, uh, uh, there's one last question there which I uh, is there any data of the effect of combining early heat stimulation and in ovo feeding? Ah. Uh, uh, f for the moment, we have not experienced this, but uh, uh, in fact, uh, in ovo feeding, yes, it's also uh, another way to uh, change the, um, well, the, uh, here, the nut nutrient content mm -hmm. of the egg. Uh, that could be uh, easily applied uh, at the same time uh, at, uh, during late embryogenesis at uh, E18, for example, when at the time when, when uh, vaccines are used. There have been work also uh, from uh, uni in Israel about this and other groups. And uh, it could be, yes, we, we could try to combine to get benefits from, uh, uh, for example, uh, energy or uh, micro... Uh, nutrients in the egg from the beginning uh, to help the, the chick, the later chick and chicken to, to cope with uh, environmental change or uh, increased robustness of the bird. Thank you very much. It was a really interesting talk. Thank you.